Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, our next explosive referee stoppage taken home by TKO. We move on to bout number two. Bout number two is sanctioned for six three-minute rounds in a men's cruiserweight 200 pounds boxing division matchup. As always, your man in the ring is referee Oliver Breen. Please help me welcome as we bring our first fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Ghana. It's Abraham Tabu. corner he hails from Germany it's Shukran Parwani well, 30 years old Shukran Parwani from Kabul originally now boxing out of Hamburg for a good amount of his pro career he was kind of between light heavy and cruiser really at 11 and 0 he won the German light heavyweight title. That was three and a bit years ago, over 10 rounds against an undefeated fighter. But he was clearly one of these fighters who was too big for light heavy, but was reluctant to make the move up because it's such a big jump between 175 pounds and, and 200 pounds. If you're stuck in the middle of that, then it really can be a problem. But he's, he's worked his way into it since. The one defeat coming in May last year in Russia by sixth round stoppage against a fighter called Vika Peter Miroro. Although he was on the road for that one, he was boxing out of a home corner, so really expected to win it. He got back in the ring three weeks later, so didn't waste any, any time at all, notching a, a win, but hasn't been in the ring since then. So, so this is his first fight in about nine months. Ladies and gentlemen, we're underway with bout number two. Bout number two is sanctioned for six three-minute rounds in a men's cruiserweight 200-pound boxing division matchup. Your referee in charge of the action is referee Oliver Breen from Germany. Please help me welcome back as we reintroduce first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighs it officially at 90.3 kgs, 199 pounds, with a pro record of 17 wins, with 14 of those big wins coming in by way of knockout and five losses on record. Fighting out of Ghana, it's Abraham Tabool. And now, introducing his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, he stands 193 centimeters, six foot three, weighing officially at 90.8 kgs, 200 pounds. He enters the ring tonight with a pro record of 16 wins, with 13 of those big wins coming in by way of knockout and only a singular loss on record. Fighting out of Kabul, Afghanistan, by way of Hamburg, Germany, is Shukran S.P. Parwani. Our fighters are ready. Referee Oliver Breen will now be giving his final instructions to the boxers. Gentlemen, fight us the rules. Attention, my commands all the time. Touch, love, good luck. Check again. 
Yeah. Quite an intense stare off between those two, and then Tabul went to touch gloves. Parwani had already gone, so he connected with thin air. Now Parwani comes back to the centre of the ring again. I like this. We had a little bit of aggro at the at the weigh-in yesterday, a, a shove from Lenroy Thomas on, oh, yes. on Smokichi. A heavyweight fight we'll see later. That got that got quite interesting. The weigh-in was kind of delayed a little bit yesterday. Everybody was in the room waiting for quite a long time, and it was quite it's quite relaxed, the whole atmosphere generally, but fighters get edgy. They want to get on the scales. They want to get off again and go and do what they need to do, refuel and rehydrate and all of those things. And okay. he looks like he's absolutely in the zone here, Parwani. He really does. He's giving to ball death stairs across the ring there. Parwani boxing out of the southpaw stance. He's got the blue gloves, predominantly black shorts. Tabal with the black gloves. Backed up into the blue corner at the minute. It's a little bit too wide. I've left up there from the ball there off the ropes. It's a little bit too wide. You know, if you get in trouble or something happens, you just can't move quick enough to get out of trouble. Direction. The wide stance is good. Generally, some power. You bend the legs a little bit, but you're just taking that front foot a little bit too close to the time. Right idea that his hands go to the single shots. Instead, his hands go to the back side of the ball, but he just Just that southpaw stance, you know, leading with the right where Pawani is. I think he's just struggling to because he can't touch him with the jab with the left hand. Means he's not he's sitting on that back foot trying to wait for that perfect shot with the right hand. Decent positive start there from Pawani, I thought. You know, he didn't rush his work, you know, he was trying to pick his shots, and then you know, he did at times try to let his punches go in combinations. Just needs to just defeat a little bit more to get a little bit more um, um, quality in some of his work. He's got a bit of closer times you know, when he did throw those twos and threes. But apart from that, I thought it was a good first round from him. He kept Kabul quiet, and that was important. <laughs> He's dropping down to low 20s, a little bit of a breeze coming in off bar. Boxing in the open air is, is always a bit special, there's something kind of exhilarating about it really. This tennis stadium is, is the ideal scenario because the floor space is exactly the right size in tennis stadiums and then the tiering that rises up quite steep, it's perfect in a lot of ways. I 
line he wants to go again. When he throws a left hand and he lands with this, I, I double it up. I know it's, I know it's, it's, it's a backhand, it's a wrist, but I think he would land. Second, he would land. Hello, Roy Jones, you know, almost, almost. Too much has happened in this opening round. In opening round, round two so far. Well, already after the first round, because you can see that you know, Paladi has the better skills. And, 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 and box better from range is starting. So, Bono, he has to. Change the the fight. He has to forward. Yeah, it's interesting, just then he threw a good one two part one. The left hand looked to me like he got through really quite clean, and then he just moved straight in and yes, 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 to, yes, yes. to grab hold and bring things to a close. When, as you said previously, he just popped up and. Yeah, the, the feet are too wide, so you haven't really got control of them properly. A wide stance is great, because his legs are straight when they're wide and off bent. Too far out, so there's no control of a, 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 a joke to distance. Yes, yes, go, 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 more on that, there's more to do after the time I left hand. It's quite, a, it's quite a new technique that he throws you straight to. He gets the rotation of the hips. He can come back with the right hook, it's in the right position to throw it. Round for him. He's dominating. He's dominating everything, isn't he? All the space, all the, all the quality works coming from him. To balls, trying to everything again. Tries to mount a little bit of an attack. He's a bit, he's a bit wild and crude with his stuff, with, it, with his punches, and it's not really has the, the desired effect. Poani just hasn't been able to make a dent in Kabul with anything. Even that long, even that long left hand is a clear, clean shot, but he hasn't been able to really knock Kabul back with it yet. And that's why I said about doubling it up. He'll, he'll hit him to stop him, and then the second one will hopefully then have more of an effect, push it back under his heels. And then you start putting him under pressure a little bit more. But he's, boxing, he's boxing well, he's just taking his time, he's not rushing anything at the times. But again, the feet are a little bit closer and, and he has much more success. Seconds out. Be interested to see if he does want to try and click up through the gears a bit. We're through two rounds now, they're scheduled for six. That's his opponent, Abraham Tibble, the man I'm talking about, the shot from Pavani on the left of your screen there. Boxing out of a southpaw stance, the left-handed stance. You want him to go through the gear, but you also don't want him to get too excited because there was a little glimpse in that second round. He did try it, but he got it not quite slightly wild, but that's when Kabul threw with it. Kabul wants a little chaos in the swing. So you want him to be a structure, you want him to up the pace a little bit more. And what it is, again, can I go back to the feet? If he ups the pace, he gets a little bit, he loses his shape a little bit more. Yeah. 
You're not throwing a lot of punches, and it, it, you clearly can. You have it, didn't you? As long as there's players in your belly a little bit, let's use all that and, and focus in on some of the work. Because at, at the minute, he's clearly three rounds down. Yes, there's no question about that. Second round. Second round. <laughs> So into the second half of this fight, Sergio for six in the cruiserweight division, Shokran Pawani. And the ball close there, but you see. Sound ball, left handed. Pretty well so far. Certainly won the first three rounds. So you want to put the close the space, of course, you can put the pressure on the line, but walking in just in straight lines is not quite the best. You can have the real swing of the shots like that. You can have wings, of course, but it's not going to work. You've got to get some rhythm to work. You have to roll under the punches and make yourself a target hand and hit. Make Pawani look for the targets. He knows where you are though every time you walk forward towards him. Flat right, but Pawani was able to avoid that. Which is a nice short straight left hand there. Ran again. Guard up there for Pawani. He's just going to try and get after him again. He just picks up that front foot. Absolutely, that's definitely a road jump. He's definitely a road jump fan. Yeah. No, he does. Oh, 
He circles left, he circles right, he looks quite deliberate. But he sets himself when he punches, and that's that's why he lands with some power. It doesn't necessarily look like he does, but he obviously does. No, and what happened there? He threw that left hand twice. He threw a one-two and hit him off balance. And in the second one, he hit on him to ball was seriously hurt. But in the second, he hit him off balance with the, with the first left hand. The second one he threw, it knocks him over. Again, it's both just... You know, reload a little sometimes with the same shot can work wonders for you but he's neat with his work and it's, and it, and it's neat and tidy and the more the more wild the ball comes which makes him potentially more of a danger the neater player he has been and he's used the ring quite well to, to, the first two rounds he, two and a half rounds he put in pressure onto ball trying to push him back and now he's using the ring now to allow the, the, the guy to come onto him and, and make him miss and make him pay <laughs> So into the fifth. A little touch of gloves between the two. Again, just steps into that. Rapid second left hand. It's quite clicky through the gears a little bit here. Clearly confidence, hasn't he? Massively. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, Gotta be careful this is gonna happen because it goes it goes up the level and it's work and it's a good job. Balance thing, he knocks him off balance, he wasn't, he wasn't hurt, he hasn't really been hurt at any point. Again, the ball just walking forward, there's no, there's no movement to the shoulders. You can't make him pull any look for the tag. He knows exactly what he is. What he does is just watch him for that looping right hand pull out. He's all set. He's fine. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Go! Get him! Left hand to the left the head, doubles up, volleyed up top again there. Actually, that's a good body shot, he's coming off the road, but I was going to say that was good there from Brian. He, he knew he was trying to be set the third, but I can't get the tackle, kept that distance. Good the right hand and then so many guys here, just to be fair. I'm saying you should be throwing that left hand, coming back with that right hook. The right hand there from the ball. Better shots than he's throwing, definitely. He just pulls him back up a little bit there. He felt it, didn't he? He did. He catches a right hand at the end there where he's trying to show both a touch. He was sticking his tongue out, goading his opponent, and he wasn't quite out of range. He tried to pull back out of range and was clipped by a right from Tabul, who again gets a little bit aggravated at the end of the round. Some interesting stuff in that fifth. 
It was, and again, it's still Ron Puan. He's dominated for most of it, of course, and he started off really well, too, and uh, doubling up with the left hand and push, pushing to roll back. Just he got caught with a little body shot as he was throwing, and then at the end there, he just got caught with a, with a couple of right hands. That was just a really little bit of a warning sign. Just to keep that discipline. We one round to go now. We want to force the pace and try and we'll get a dramatic finish if he can. But I think it's more important that he keeps his shape and his composure and doesn't let what you would expect now to bowl a wild and maybe a little bit more committed than he's been in the previous five rounds to try and make a, a statement here. And this is this is a big night for Wiley because been out. through his recent history. It was last May where a 15 and 0 he got stopped in the sixth against a fighter who had 10 defeats on his record, 29 wins but 10 defeats. And Ladies and gentlemen, and this is your sixth and win, final round. But he lost his unbeaten record. He got stopped, and that that could do something to you. They got him back in the ring quickly, but it was a first round knockover against a an out and out away corner fighter, and then they put him in with Tabal, who's not quite that because. He's got 17 wins against those five defeats. He has picked up some, some titles in his time. And he's been with some real good operators. It hasn't ended that well for the Rivers, but the likes of Zizchenko or, or Duradola or Kosobutsky. But they're real good fighters. Really, yeah. I think you were right. I think you were absolutely right about the second round when you said that he looked like he might have been a little bit of panic if somebody really stepped to him. Because I think, I think there was, but maybe after this there won't be necessarily. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this, this is a real confident goal. Like, this is a guy who, who should beat, but he's also on paper quite a dangerous opponent. The fact that he's going to be beat by quality operators, he's fully full of confidence. If you can get the win, this is a real box of like still two minutes to go, almost then it's... Uh, he still takes a lot of discipline to keep the composure for these last two minutes. You know, yes, yes, yes. He's let the fight hand go whenever he can. He doesn't really snap that jab, does he? Pawani, that's one thing. That's what he's now fighting on the line. He's not fit enough to have a fit in jab, he that, that takes a lot of spin. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be perfectly surprised, I have to be what he has done is kept his discipline throughout the, throughout the fight. He hasn't tried to over, he's not hurt the guy, he wants to make a statement a little bit. He hasn't tried to overplay his hand. He's just looking for clean shots all the time. He hasn't just a few more combinations here and there. He's not going to be critical. He's not going to be quality work. And he's feeding the composition of the from the last few rounds. He's got that fantastic white stance he started off with. It's the last 20 seconds or so. So I think he's pleased with this. Just to see what they do with next. Left hand there, and it looks like he might be able to get the lockdown. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Good. I, I enjoyed it. I think he worked really, really, really well. And, I, and again, it, it was almost as if like they were, they were listening to us, double up with the left hand, and he did as the fight went on. With his feet are too wide, and then at the halfway stage, he brought his feet closer together, which gave him more, even more agile, more movement, and also there was more rotation in, in his punches. Then I think he, I think he had that wide stand to make, to make you feel the pressure and to hurt you. When his feet got closer together, I think his punches had more push as it went on. But well, but well, it was a bit. The bull didn't offer much. He offered potentially a, a problem if you stood really close to him and let him swing at you. But if you, if you kept it, which you're never going to do that with anybody, of course, but if you kept your distance, which he did, and you, and you didn't use the jab as much, and a long left hand, then it, it was a good night for him. And the bull was fun. He was. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, he was fun in between the rounds. 
he was more fed in between the rounds than he was actually when, when he, he the was actually at his was most aggressive just as the bell went at the end of each round wasn't he that, that, that's when he, he's, um, his hackles started to rise slightly but he grew in confidence by Wiley during the war and fight that, that was how you put it at one point and everything just comes off that doesn't it yes. when what has happened to you happened to him last year it, it can take some rebuilding and it's an extension and going into the next fight. It, it continues on that vein because you go, well, look how well I box now. And it's almost like, and then as a fighter, you will almost forget that you did lose. As you know, fighters are the biggest lighters on the planet and we lie to ourselves all the time. And that's when you have to be like that to, to get in the ring sometimes and, and then to take the challenges that, that most people wouldn't want to take. Yeah, of course, there's a, you tread that line between confidence and, and self-delusion constantly, huh. pretty much, really. It's, that's, that's part of the job. Okay, so these two in the middle of the ring. Let's get the let's get the score from Rishi. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number two comes to a close after completing six three-minute rounds in a men's cruiserweight boxing matchup. We go to the scorecards, which judge is ruling in favor of your winner by points, with judge one ruling in favor of 60 to 54, judge two, 60 to 54, and judge three, 60 to 53, ill in favor of your winner by points declared by unanimous decision to the red corner, SP Shukran Parwali. So a couple of the judges giving Tabul a share of one of the rounds there because without that it would have been 60-53 because of that knockdown, which is where one judge went with it. But it was comprehensive there from, from Shukran Parwani. It was his win, his win all day long. Okay. Let's get a quick word with him now in the middle of the ring with Rishi. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm stood here with your winner who's taken it home by unanimous decision, Mr. Shukran Parwani. Shukran, how do you feel? That was an explosive six rounds over there. In between rounds, you guys were not letting yourselves go. He's still trying to throw punches at you. You're throwing punches at him. I can see your corner getting riled up. There was a lot of animosity going on during the fight. What would you like to say about that? First of all, Salamu Alaikum. Thank you for everybody to be here, support us. Thank you for Kareem Legacy Management. He invited me to fight here. Thank you for the organization. Thank you, brothers. Great event, great people, such a great uh, city here in Dubai. Uh, yeah, the fight, six rounds. I thought I knocked him early out, but then my corner told me that all my brothers stay patient. Just do your, your job, box, show a little bit skills. I try like this, but it is what it is. I won. That's important. Up to the next. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first from SP Shukran Parwani. Always good to catch a, a quick word with the winner. And it was a, a good performance, as we've been saying. And he had his moments to ball. Sometimes he looked a little bit more aggressive, but generally Parwani, from the start, kept him in his place. And that's what you need to do against away corner fighters. If they get a sniff of of weakness, then they will they will look to exploit that. And he never did that. He never allowed that at any point. Good performance.